All right, the last topic in this chapter deals with uh, some magnetic properties of transition metals. So a couple new vocab words that may have popped their heads up, so they may not be new, but paramagnetic and diamagnetic. So it turns out that any species that has unpaired electrons is paramagnetic. And what that means is with unpaired electrons, uh, it will be attracted when moving through a magnetic field. So it experiences a net attraction. So whereas diamagnetic means all of your electrons are paired, there are no unpaired electrons and you'll experience a very, very slight repulsion when moving through a, uh, a magnetic field instead. All right, so we want to decide whether the following complexes are paramagnetic or diamagnetic. I copied down all of the electron configurations. They were the same ones we used for the color problems in the last section. Uh, in this case, first one is CR3+. Now, CR3+, I just right off the bat say, uh, well, not yes, but that it's paramagnetic. So. And the reason I say it's paramagnetic in this case, we have an odd number of d electrons. If we have an odd number of d electrons, there's no way for them to even be paired. Now it says low spin here, but technically with three electrons, whether it's low spin or high spin, they fill in the same way. So it doesn't make a difference technically in this case. Um, but with an odd number, done. So if we take a look at copper plus now, 3d10, so that means that the d orbitals are completely filled, which means they're all paired up. And so this is gonna be diamagnetic instead. Moving on to scandium 3 plus, it's just isoelectronic with argon, a complete filled shell, and that's also definitely going to have all its electrons paired and be diamagnetic. Uh, the next two examples, Fe2 plus, uh, low spin and high spin. Again, we only get low spin and high spin complexes for octahedral complexes, so that's why I'm kind of patterning off the octahedral splitting here. So with Fe2 plus being 3D6, so we fill it in the low spin way, where we fill up everything down low before ever going up high. Uh, we see that all the electrons are paired, and this species is gonna be diamagnetic. Whereas if we do Fe2 plus high spin, so again, we've gotta fill in six electrons, but now we'll go up high before ever pairing anything up. So, and in this case, we've got four unpaired electrons, and therefore this thing is gonna be very paramagnetic. So down here, we've got argon 3D8. So, and 3D8, assuming an octahedral complex, which might be a bad assumption in some cases, but uh, assumption I'm gonna make here. Uh, with eight, we're not specified otherwise, so I'll just fill it in. Uh, and it doesn't matter if we fill it in the low spin or the high spin way, because with eight electrons, it'd fill in the, the net result would be exactly the same. And we'd end up with two unpaired electrons right there. And so nickel two plus would also be paramagnetic. So now if on the odd chance nickel two plus were told it was square planar, well, if you fill in the electrons for any square planar complex, you're gonna find out that they all end up Paired. and in this case it would be diamagnetic. So with nickel 2 plus you might need a little more information and maybe I'll reword this question to say for octahedral complexes across the board or something like that. Um, but that's the deal. Finally in Fe F6 3 minus we've got Fe3 plus there. We can infer with the six negatively charged fluoride ions that to end up with an overall negative three charged iron must be plus three. So and we're told that F minus is a weak field ligand. Weak field ligands go with uh, high spin. So in this case, it causes a weak field because it's a, cr a small crystal field splitting energy. And we fill in five D electrons for this high spin complex. And we end up with five unpaired electrons and this thing's also very paramagnetic. Cool, so unpaired electrons, paramagnetic, all the electrons paired, diamagnetic.